Hey, what's up? I'm Dean Harris with Mountain Valley Machine. Today we're going to be doing an install video for the Arctic Cat Pro Climb chassis. Uh, this specific application will be the Mountain Cat. Uh, these are the tools you'll need for the installation process. Uh, you'll need a couple of pry bars, a torque wrench to torque the secondary clutch, uh, a couple of flat bladed screwdrivers, a Phillips screwdriver, uh, 7 sixteenths socket to adjust the belt tension, a T25 and a T30, um, Torx, a spring puller, some nylon ties, uh, you may or may not need that piece of 2x4 and a dead blow, a couple of right angle picks, a normal pick, uh, the inch and an eighth socket we talk about in the video you'll see a little bit later, needle nose files, uh, a metal scale is what I use to set the tension, snap ring pliers, uh, a half inch wrench to lock down the tensioner, propane torch, carb cleaner to clean up the bearing, grease, and a container to hold the oil. So as you can see we've uh, removed the side panel. Uh, we'll take the exhaust can off. Uh, we need to take out these two screws that hold the plastic on and the stirrup. At that point we'll be able to remove the cover and the tank off of the case itself. You might have noticed this had a stock can on it in the last segment of the video. Uh, we ended up taking the hood off, uh, undoing the, the pipe to get the can off of here. Uh, we strongly recommend that if you're spending the money on a belt drive to spend the money on a can, remove another you know, 12, 15 pounds off your snowmobile. At this point, we've done what we said. We've undone these two uh, screws here. Uh, we've undone the stirrup. Two screws from here, two screws from the bottom. Um, undone all the wiring harness. That's a speedometer pickup and an oil pump. Uh, we cut the clamp here that holds this return line on the oil tank. And now we're ready to remove the cover. So what we're going to do now is remove the last screw off the cover. Uh, I'll remove the cap here. When we get that out, you can see i got a container here ready to catch the oil. It's not easy to get all the oil out, so once you get your oil pump out, because there's some baffles in the tank, you'll have some more oil after that. Put the cap on the tank here so we don't lose any more oil than necessary. Go ahead and remove the two screws for the pump. The pump should come out of the tank. The oil pump is a little bit tricky to get out of there. It's kind of tight. I start with a small flat bladed screwdriver, move to the bigger one, start on one side, work to the other side, and then once it pops a little bit, it'll slowly work its way out of the tank. There's the other oil that I told you would be there. Go ahead and remove this plug off the jack shaft. Pop the spring retainer out of the jack shaft. Make sure you keep a hold of all this stuff because we reuse most all of it in the install. Snap ring on the drive shaft. A little bit tight down in here. Snap ring. Go ahead and remove your spring tension, your chain tensioner. Pull the sprockets and the chain out. These bottom sprockets have been a little bit tight. You might have to take a file and clean up the splines just a little bit. Okay, I went ahead with some really small needle um, files. 
I just made sure there was no burrs. And then uh, I can't emphasize enough how careful to be. This case is quite thin, magnesium. Uh, we don't want you to break your case, but I did use some crowfoot tie pry bars, got in behind, uh, stayed as close to the edge where the strength is as much as possible, and slowly just worked it off. Now we're able to pull, come in with our hands, back and forth, wiggle, wiggle, your pulley comes out. Hey, if you remember, we talked to you about this spring retainer. You've already pulled this cap out. You've pulled this first spring retainer. Behind the sprocket is another spring retainer. Uh, then there's a snap ring and a washer. Um, like I said earlier, keep track of all this stuff. We reuse it, but it'll be in a little different order. So pull all this off, then we'll heat up the case, pull the bearing out, and we'll start the install. Okay, we've removed the uh, inner spring retainer. Uh, you usually get a little bit of damage with this, so we use uh, reuse the outside one. Um, the C-clip that was holding the washer and the washer. At this point you need to pop the retaining spring retainer for the bearing. Pop that out and we use a little propane torch. We suggest you not use uh, oxyacetylene torch. It takes a little bit longer but the heat's a little bit more manageable. Um, and then again, we want to remind you this is magnesium. Chances of you catching it on fire are very slim, but if it does, it burns very hot and it's very dangerous, so be careful. So I've been at this with the propane torch for two or three minutes. I'm just keeping some even heat around the outside uh, bearing housing here. I like to use a little right angle pick. Got a little bend in there. Just hook inside the bearing. It should slide right out. The new bearing, why it's still warm. Not a little trick of there. Keep it straight. So as you notice, that didn't go in as smooth as it sometimes does. So what I have here is an inch and an eighth deep socket. Just fits perfectly on the race, goes over the jack shaft. Smack a couple times with your hand, just make sure it's seated. <clears throat> and you get your spring retainer clip. So now we don't change out the bottom bearing because that's a big hassle for you, the consumer. So what we do is uh, we take some, a can of carb cleaner, clean out the bearing really well, blow it out with some compressed air, and then we'll pack it full of grease. So now we've cleaned that out really well. We're going to take some grease, just use your finger, pack the bearing full of grease. Uh, this is kind of a maintenance thing. We suggest you do this uh, each year on your preseason. Just pop your lower pulley off and uh, pack, clean that out, pack it full of grease and put it back together. You have this black donut shaped piece. It doesn't matter which side goes in, which side goes out. You also have the small aluminum spacer. So the spacer goes in, the black piece snaps into the case, and all that's doing is retaining the grease so it doesn't make a mess of your snowmobile. So if you remember correctly when we took this apart, the, the zinc coated washer was against the bearing. That does go against the bearing again. What changes now, instead of this snap ring that was against that washer, now we'll use one of the spring retainers that were towards the outer edge. Um, typically we damage these just a little bit, the inner one getting it off. Make sure you use the best one to go back on and that will go right against this washer. So what we have now is we have that washer in, 
that uh, spring retainer is against the washer, but it's not seated. The way we get that seated is we come over, undo the secondary clutch just a little bit. Have a board handy, and we roll it up on its edge, put the board right against the bolt. So the pressure of the sleds against that. And we come back up to the top, click, click, and that ring snaps into place. The next step is going to go pretty fast. As you can see, I have my welding gloves. The pulley is actually in the oven right now at 500 degrees. We're waiting for that to come up to temperature. Um, typically, we can get the pulley just to slide right on, be seated. You know, we obviously still have the sled rolled over on the board on the bolt of the jack shaft. Um, there are some times that it'll take just a little bit of persuasion at the very end. Uh, we don't want you hitting our pulley with any kind of a hammer, uh, steel, aluminum, brass, no hammers whatsoever. What we like to do is grab a piece of 2x4, soft, make sure it's not any kind of hardwood, um, and then a dead blow hammer and just seat at that last 20 or 30 thousandths. Um, it's okay to use a propane torch again. Um, you know, 500 degrees is where we want to keep it. If it cools down a little bit, just carefully warm it up a little bit and seat it that last little bit. Okay, I'm back with the pulley out of the oven at 500 degrees. Slide it on your shaft. Should seat. Grab the snap ring that was against the washer. Don't burn yourself. And put it in. Okay, we've given the pulley a little bit of time to cool down. Now's the time to install the belt. Um, it really doesn't matter which way the belt goes on, but the cord, carbon cords actually do form a direction. So you want to put it on the same way every single time. So I just put it on to where I can read the letters. Before you install the cover, we got to get the actual speedometer pickup out of the old cover. Uh, a couple of screwdrivers usually work pretty well. Just silicone in. Work it up under one edge, get a bigger one in, just slowly pry, and it'll pop out of there. I typically just take my thumbnail and scrape any excess silicone off the back of there. Another thing we need to remove from the stock oil tank is the low oil sensor. That's this piece right here that's just below the return line. You pry it out a little bit, get a screwdriver on it. You might have to turn it a little bit because this, that'll hold you from coming out, so make sure that you have it picked up. And then the same thing here, grab your screwdriver, pop this grommet out, and you'll be ready to install it into your new tank. All right, I cleaned up the cavity really well. Just used some black silicone. Uh, here's the pickup that we took out of the stock case. Shove it in there. Push hard, you should have a little bit of silicone come out. Swipe off the excess. Just work it back and forth just a little to make sure you don't have silicone holding it up. Then what I like to do just to make sure it doesn't come out, I just take a little piece of masking tape Tape it down and let that dry and install your cover later. So as you get ready to mount your cover, there's two different lengths of M6 bolts that was in the stock Articat cover. You want to make sure and save two of these. There's four that we don't use. You want two of the shorter ones uh, to mount your oil pump in the bottom of your oil tank. We'll show you that a little later in the video. Okay, with the belt in place, it's time to install the cover. Just drops down in. Make sure you put the belt on the back side of your tensioner. Might have to slide it out on your pulley a couple of times.
snaps into place and then we'll use the stock screws out of the uh, Arctic Cat cover to hold ours in place. Okay, with the cover uh, put on the case, it's time to tension your belt. We want to run a lot of slop. Obviously, that's a little too much. Um, you can the adjuster bolt here. Start tightening it up. One thing you want to do before you start tensioning is make sure the cogs of the belt are seated in the cogs of the pulley on both the upper and lower pulley. Uh, you can do this, that by turning the track by hand or turning the uh, secondary clutch by hand. We want between 5 eighths of an inch and 3 quarters of an inch of play on the back side of your belt. So if you can see this little stand up in this window, it's probably a little bit hard, but it's right here. You should be able to push it about mm, almost an eighth of an inch past that. We're still just a little loose. All right, I like that. Um, grab your wrench and snug down your tensioner bolts. Don't have to go super tight on these, just make sure they're tight. Next, we'll be mounting your oil tank. Uh, your oil tank will come without a low oil sensor hole uh, for a couple of reasons. People have different preferences uh, where to put them. We used to put them on the outside with these skinnier side panels, that won't work. Uh, on this particular application, um, it's going to have an SLP can. Uh, we have a little bit more room towards the back, so we're going to put this one in the back. It's, okay, to assemble the low oil sensor in the tank, first you need to push the grommet into the hole that you drilled, the 5164 hole. Make sure that's seated. This has to fall down. That goes towards the bottom of the tank when it's like that. There is a flat side to this. That goes inward to the words of snowmobile. Just snap in there. That's simple. Then you need to mount your tank uh, with the three screws that come in the kit. With the tank installed on the cover, it's now time to put the oil return line uh, onto the fitting of the tank. It's absolutely pertinent that as you do this you make sure that this T right here is below the level of our barbed fitting. Once you get that in place you'll want to put a hose clamp on that. And then it's time to install your oil pump. It just slides in the bottom of the tank. It's pretty snug. Once it's in place, those two screws that we saved, the shorter screws out of the uh, cover, is what we're going to use to hold the oil tank in place. Don't use the shorter screws that was in it in the, from the factory. Use these ones that came out of the cover, the short ones out of the cover, and install them to hold the pump in place. Okay, I went ahead and bolted the oil pump into the tank. You want to make sure that the flange of the oil pump actually seats flat against the bottom of the tank. Okay, with the oil pump in place, uh, it's time to plug in all your wires, which would be your oil pump, your oil sensor, and your speedometer pickup. Uh, they're all different plugs, so you can't plug them into the wrong spot. With the wires all plugged in, now it's time to go ahead and install your stirrup. Uh, go ahead and put it into place. Put the two screws in from here, two screws in from the bottom. And now you should take some zip ties and make sure you tie all the wires uh, away from the moving parts like the belt and the pulleys and the heat sources from the can and any of that kind of stuff. Just make dang sure that you're a good distance away from all those components. Um, the other thing is you run a small risk of an air bubble in your oil line. You need to do a visual check on there make sure there's no air bubbles. If you see air bubbles, Arctic Cat does have a procedure for bleeding the oil pump and uh, you'd have to reach out to them to get that procedure. So what I did was got all the wire loom on this side of the low oil sensor. I tied them all together here and then I came through the stirrup and tied them back right here. Another thing we like to do is take a couple of pieces of heat tape 
put it up here on the front of the oil tank to protect it from the can. Doesn't have to be anything too extravagant, just a couple of pieces. And then last but not least, uh, remember we've loosened the secondary bolt, so go ahead and set your brake. Arctic Cat recommends you torque this bolt to 60 foot-pounds. Should be able to put some oil in it, and put a can on it, and good to go. Now that you're all done installing your kit, uh, we thought you might like to know the leftover parts that you'll have. Obviously the oil tank can cover chain and sprocket, uh, the two pieces to the oil tensioner, the bearing that you pulled off your jack shaft, two of the bolts from the chain case cover, the two original bolts out of the oil pump. Uh, this is just the cap out of the jack shaft. I left it out. You could put it in if you wanted. This is just the drain that goes in the chain case and one spring retainer. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Uh, we hope that you'll give us a follow on Instagram at MBM Motorsports, on Facebook at Mountain Valley Machine Inc. And we have a YouTube channel, MT Valley Machine. Go ahead and check us out. Our website's mountainvalleymachine.com uh, or you can give us a call here at the shop, 435-563. 3632. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good winter.